What is up, my friends, and welcome to another edition of the XFL Week in Review. I'm your host, Mark Perry, editor of XFL News Hub. And on this week's show, Pep Hamilton and Jamie Elizondo land new coaching gigs. Plus, we got some other latest XFL news for you that you might be interested in. So how do you get in touch with the show? Easy. Email podcast at XFL News Hub with your MP3s or call 888-430-7692, to extension 3. Remember to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We will read it on the show. And make sure you, of course, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's what we have going on this. This week, we asked a question out there, and we'll get into that after we kind of get into the news about do you think you're gonna he- we're going to hear anything when it- this is Super Bowl week. I know it is time to reflect a little bit. I can remember how super excited I was last year for the Super Bowl. I was at a friend's house. And man, when that XFL commercial hit, which I thought was, to be honest with you, terrible, didn't really explain the league. It was too cutesy cutesy for me. Uh, That's, you know, when it hit me, it was like, man, we're a week out. We'll be in an XFL game next weekend after the Super Bowl. I was super excited for that moment to watch that uh, commercial. And now a year later, we haven't heard anything. And we'll get into if we will hear something this week. We have actually a little bit of insider news for you when it comes to that. But we'll get your reaction to that, what you think we might hear and what we've heard. Uh, We'll get to that later in the show. But yeah, and now a year later and we are where we're at. New ownership. Oliver Luck is gone. We'll get into some of these coaches. Coaches are gone. Players will probably be gone. I mean, it's going to be a whole new thing coming in the XFL era, the 3.0 era. And we have the Super Bowl. And who do I think is going to win? I mean, I'll watch it, I guess, but I don't really care. I'm an XFL guy. I hope um, that Kansas City will go back-to-back would be kind of cool because no one wants Tom Brady to win, but I have a feeling that the ratings will be fantastic. And the only th- key, the thing that we got is that they're playing at the Vipers Stadium. Let's let's be honest. They're playing at Vipers Stadium. All right, so a couple of news tw- tidbits this week. First, Pep Hamilton, who I was really hoping would get re-signed by the XFL and come back to D.C. Uh, NFL Network's Tom Pelissero is reporting that the Houston Texans are expected to hire Hamilton as their quarterback's coach. Why he was not retained in Los Angeles uh, Rams or Chargers, I should say. I don't understand why you wouldn't have him back. And now, of all places... The Houston Texans and their situation with their quarterback, I'm not really sure. Hey, it's a gig is a gig. But, um, I mean, man, maybe there's still a shot that we can get Pep Hamilton back. But as of right now, he's signing with the Houston Texans. And that's the thing to me. If the XFL were hiring, maybe they already have somebody in line. I'll be really interesting to know if there was any interaction between Pep Hamilton and the XFL. Or he was like, ah, I'm, I'm not interested. Or they were like, hey, we already have an idea of somebody who's going to fill your spot. Like, who knows? And Hamilton did have a little connection with Oliver Luck and that section. So maybe there, you know, Pep Hamilton's not into it anymore. Who knows? Maybe we'll find out one day. Another coach that gets signed was now the CFL's Edmonton football team, because apparently they're not the Eskimos anymore. Is that a thing? Names former Tampa Bay Vipers offensive coordinator Jamie Elizondo as their head coach. What's interesting about this story is this is after a week that their head coach, Scott Milanovic, resigned to become an assistant coach with the Indianapolis Colts. So this guy, Milanovic, didn't get a chance to call a single game. He was only the coach last year, so due to you-know-what and the canceling of the entire 2020 CFL season. This guy never got a chance to coach. Now they're finally having a season and now they're going to, he's bailing to go to the Colts. The interesting thing about Elizondo is that before the XFL season in 2019, Edmonton actually, the same team tried to lure Elizondo away from the Vipers for its head coaching gig, but was denied by the XFL because they were all under contract at that time. 
Elizondo was the offensive coordinator for the Ottawa Red Blacks for three seasons before leaving for the XFL. The Red Blacks won the Grey Cup in 2016. I'm sure all of you listening knew that. Now, where does Elizondo come in? Well, he in 2008, he was the receivers and special teams assistant in Montreal with the Alouettes with then head coach Mark Tressman. And of course, then Tressman brought Elizondo to the XFL. So that's where that connection was and how he got here. And now he's going back to the CFL. So I'm definitely going to root for him because I thought that the Tampa Bay Vipers offense started to pick up steam. And I think they were going to make a nice little run of it. But then you, we all know what happened there. So congratulations to those two guys. There's a bunch of other guys signing. And we'll kind of cover those things over the next week or so. Uh, guys, former players, XFL players that are now coaches and other kind of coaches make changing teams and stuff. I would rather be talking about the new 3.0 XFL era and who's coming and who's the coach and all that stuff. But we haven't heard anything yet. And we'll get into what you think, of course, later on in the show as well. All right, my friends. So with that, we'll take this little commercial break and we'll get to your social media stuff right after this. Stay tuned, my friends. Here's what you missed on the XFL Markcast. This is quite possibly the biggest episode we've ever had. Uh, no disrespect to any of our previous guests, Spring League MVP Brian Scott, friend of the show Chad Otrocinco, Patrick Dees, my wife. This is honestly, I w- wouldn't you say the biggest biggest guest, biggest show we've had so far? Yeah, probably. Yeah. And no disrespect to I, Chad Otrocinco. No, 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 no. I think Otrocinco is a little bit bigger. Not by much. No disrespect. One and one. Okay, I'm going to vote for Ocho Cinco because we did have Ocho Cinco. This guy's big. We worked on this for about a month. We got Greg Miller, one of the he owners did. of Fan Control Football, one of the team owners coming up later in the show. So just kind of order of operations today. We got some XFL stuff. Then there's like a, there's a ton of Fan Control Football stuff. There's been a lot of talking this week about, you know, timelines from last year to this year for the XFL. You know, okay, well, last February 2nd, they announced that Bob Stoops was coming on, so that means that this year, it, it's not at all the same thing. Even the Houston Roughnecks. Jeffrey Pollock and The Rock and Danny are picturing the XFL, if all goes well, as a you know a 50-year brand. Even with the Houston Roughnecks, do they care really about one team and the logo that was around for nine months, right? No. I mean, they can keep the name, but I do definitely think that it is not worth them at all to pay any licensing or royalties for those logos. Just change the logos. It's easy enough. I, we understand. It's 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 obvious what Vince was trying to do with the original XFL logos. We discussed that last week. Uh, he was trying to draw on that familiarity of the Patriots, of the Oilers. Um, but it's time. Like, just fix the logos and change them up, and, and we're good to go. I do think this is awesome. I do think, like, it's a tough road to hoe, right, to be like, we're starting a football league. But I think this has a chance, and I think the more you see people learn about it and get into it, the more excitement there is. And I can't believe the, the amount of people I've told about it who are like, what are you? So it's Madden. And I'm like, no, no, it's like Madden. And like they're real. Like you have to sit there and explain it. But when everybody has that moment of like, oh, like that actually sounds cool. Of course, you could find XFL Markcast on XFL News Hub and wherever you get podcasts, including YouTube. What's up, XFL Army? If you're a fan of the XFL News Hub and you have a telephone, which I know all of you do because you're sitting there playing on your phones all the time, then why not download the XFL News Hub app? That's right, it's on iTunes. It's on Android. We have an Android version and an iPhone version of the XFL News Hub app. So what do you get? You get the latest news from XFL News Hub, the premier source of XFL news in the universe. Plus, you get push notifications when we have breaking news. You be the first to know. You can leave a comment on some of the news right from your phone. Plus, you get this podcast on your phone as well. Remember, you can leave us reviews on the Google Play Store or iTunes. It links to other social media, our other social media accounts, and so much more. Be in the know. I know you're on your phones. People are on their phones all the time. They never get off their phones. 
So why not just download the XFL News Hub app on your Android or iPhone today? All you need to do is go to the Google Play Store or iTunes and just type in XFL News Hub. That's XFL News Hub. Download our app on your phone today. All right, let's get to your social media stuff first. A lot of stuff our man Josh Davis writing up about this fan control football league that's starting in a couple weeks. Of course, XFL Marcast is covering that fan control football league. I'm intrigued by it, but uh, Dennis on the Facebook says won't last. So there you have it there. Dennis is not into it. On to the YouTubes. We had a huge amount of people checking out our podcast last week and we appreciate all them for checking in dave says shared in a couple facebook groups thank you very much scuzzy voodoo sounds scary says the straw grasping in is deafening the two head oh talking about the logo the two heads are facing the same direction they have the same colors because houston wanted to be blue white and red does the nfl have anything better to do question mark Houston just keeps getting on the wrong side of the news. This time it's Pat the Patriot versus uh, what's his name? Dan the Driller, Rusty the Roughneck. That's a good question. What is the Roughneck guy's name? Mark the Oil Driller guy. Is that what we're gonna call him? I like some of the years' name, Rusty the Roughneck. That's a good one. I guess that's a good one. Someone there must have some steep karma debt or something the Astros the Rockets the Roughnecks Houston sports fans are just suffering right now oh that's true I didn't even think of that Harden James Harden leaving that whole drama the Astros with their drama Houston can't catch a break and then they had the best team in the XFL totally gonna tear it up and the league gets cut down maybe it's Houston's fault that we have this situation going on I'm surprised maybe it didn't start in Houston Maybe the first person actually got it in Houston. But they have been cursed sports-wise, at least. There's no question about that. Didn't think of that. That said, someone needs to tell the NFL pretty much the only three things Houston is known for is oil, rockets, and humidity. I've heard that. And I'm pretty sure the Houston muggies are not going to inspire any manner of affection. Baseball, basketball has the NASA bleep covered. So, frick sake, let them have stupid oil, Derek. What's next? The crisps suing Dallas for having blue bananas. Bandanas? Come on. Uh, and Mega liked that one, too. That was a good take on that one. Thank you, Scuzzy Voodoo. We like that one. Darion says, how about the Houston Galaxy? Isn't that a, that was something, isn't that a CFL? Or the Houston Apollos. That... How funny would that be? AAF is gone. Let's just call ourselves the Houston Apollos. They're more than Orlando Apollos. That's actually not a bad idea. I kind of like that one. That would be funny. I don't think it will happen. Juan says oil field themed names don't really go with Houston sports teams. Maybe Houston should drop the name Roughnecks and change it to space themed names like the Apollos. Darren says, how about they keep the logo with the hard hat and a skull with this? Uh, yeah, we saw that earlier. Jordan says, the logo has similarities, but it shouldn't be a legal issue. It's not noticeable. I agree with you there. Oh, last one for Darian says, how about the Sharks? Houston Sharks. Jack says, I hate this lawsuit. We agree with you there. This is Beep. Patrick says... <clears throat> Passenger Escobar says, wow, I thought if anyone would have changed logos in the XFL, it would be the Seattle Dragons because their logo is almost exactly like the same as University of Alabama Birmingham Blazers. So stupid, though, all eight logos have been out for over a year now. And you would think anything was wrong with any of them. The copyright people would have caught it. We've talked about that <clears throat> as well. But that is what it is, and we find out what happens we, as we don't have in control any of it. Remember, uh, Josh Davis reported that they did have an issue, but because of the league getting shut down and then t extensions that occurred, that's why we didn't really hear about it. He says, also, Super Bowl 55 prediction is the Chiefs over the Buccaneers, but I'm not fully counting out Tom Brady because he is 
when is the last time someone has ever done that and been on the right side of history? Question mark. That's true. Santa Santa Dog, eighty one. Oh, that was nice. San, we just had Santa in town. Just recycle one of the old XFL mascots. I wouldn't mind seeing the Houston Maniacs or the Houston Rage. That's a good one. Uh, Isaiah says Houston Extreme maybe or Houston Comets. Maybe he's talking about comments. Comments. Juice player. If Tressman is still coach of the Vipers, they can move to Orlando. He was the worst coach on any level. We don't want that crap in Tampa. Not a fan of Mr. Tressman. I think if they're going to make a play. Oh, I got my glasses on so I could read this. I think if they're going to make a play, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, of course, Mr. Steve Spurrier. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, Urban Delinquent XFL should file copyright on the Skycam. That's interesting. Talking about relocation, Ooz Khan says Dallas to Austin, Houston, San Antonio, D.C. to Virginia. Well, no. New York to New Jersey. Why? Oh, because of Red Bull Stadium. L.A. to San Diego or Oakland. Seattle to Portland or Boise, Tampa Bay to Orlando. But some of, again, we're not going to relocate all the teams, my friends. We want to, oh, okay, here we go. Gary, he's got it down pat. Dragons to Oakland. Okay. Wildcats to San Diego. Interesting. Guardians to Honolulu. We're trying to save money here, my friend Gary. Defenders to Toronto. Why? Roughnecks to Savannah, Georgia. Renegades to San Antonio. Okay. Uh, Timothy says Wildcats up in the Bay Area would be great. Guardians to Honolulu. Maybe The Rock would want to do that. We know his connection to Hawaii. But I don't, I don't, think, I don't think any team... Why would you want to do that to yourself? You, that would cost you so much money to do. Unless they paid you. Unless these cities were paying the XFL to come in. All right. So, uh, do you think... We will hear any announcements this week from the XFL. If so, what will it be? We threw that out on the Twitters. Jeremy says maybe a tease during Super Bowl would definitely be epic. I agree with that. And Scott, oh, Scott Anthony One says, I figure it'll pick up after the Super Bowl. We'll get into that in a second. PLS4161 says, I hope so. I have no clue what it would it would be. Maybe something about future TV deals, hopefully. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Our own Josh Davis at Davis Josh 20. He says Team Twitter accounts got their verification badges back. Could be an announcement for all teams to return or the filling of executive positions. That would be kind of cool. Hindsight underscore 2020 underscore hindsight underscore. New hats for sale. Maybe. Maybe that. And finally, uh, Frankie with a bunch of numbers. Watched the Senior Bowl yesterday. There are so many good players who just need more development. Thank God for the XFL. We agree with you on that. Now, as far as what we're hearing about an announcement this week, we had some of our insiders reach out to people within the XFL. And the answer basically, unfortunately, is there's nothing on the table right now. So don't expect any big announcement from the XFL this week for the Super Bowl, which is a shame because it's the Super Bowl week. It could get some hype, but maybe they're just going to let the NFL do its thing. And we'll go into February with who knows what. But we're coming up. I mean, remember, we've talked about there was that June time frame. The XFL's Twitter account has been going back and forth with some fans. So we know that that's alive, but we don't know. But maybe we'll be stuck with our man Paladin Demo with his images that he put out there. He's got his Project Guardians is done, along with the star player and personnel. If you're on the YouTube, you can check out his pictures. They're really cool. Of These Guardian guys all painted up. Uh, I would definitely want some. That would be cool. I'm not. You've got to explain to us what game this is. Maybe he has explained to us what game he's playing or what these guys are. I just finished watching... Um, What's that? Game? What's the the Netflix one with the? Um, oh gosh, with the chess, 
and you guys are going to kill me in the chat or in the, in the comments section. It's, I'm totally going drawing a blank right now, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Queen's Gambit. That's it. Watching that. Is this some kind of game like that or what? But it's cool just checking out some of the pictures that he sent to us. So that's it for this week. So maybe next week it's just going to be about palette and demos creation of stuff because we've got no news coming from the XFL. And we are technically after this weekend and the weekend week next, the clock really, unless they decide to move the XFL games into the spring where it's warmer, which I'm all for. Technically, after the Super Bowl, the clock is on for the XFL. We're a year out. And I guess they're just trying to save money so that they don't have to put people on payroll necessarily all at once. So we might get, you know, eight coaches. Here they are. Instead of some kind of slow trickle out, here's a TV deal. Here's the coaches and go at it. I I don't have a problem with, you know, announcing the coaches sometime in June or April or May or something like that. But a TV deal and really that's what we need is a TV deal and a commissioner. And I guess according to the article from, you know, that that search has been going on for two months now. Uh, You know, just make a decision and go. One of my concerns, and I'll leave you with this. Oh, and by the way, our fantasy app is, is doing pretty good there. Uh, fantasy.prowrestlingnewshub.com uh, it's it's working great and I can't wait to debut it for the XFL stuff but one concern I did have is I remember all of, I followed this thing from the beginning every interview Oliver Luck did I listened to or read and one of the things he had talked about is having too many essentially too many cooks in the kitchen when it came to money and the only way a successful spring league would work is if there was one person in charge of money and that's it. When you, The reason why he wasn't down with the AAF, at least some of the things he said, was that reason is because there was too many investors that you needed to answer to. And to simplify the process, you just needed to have one person that you would answer to. Now, the NFL has a board of directors and I'm sure other stuff too. But that was his take, is that when you have too many people making decisions, I assume that the main decision maker is Danny Garcia, but she's not the one with all the money. It's Redbird Capital are the ones that have the money. So the fear is that you get too many people wanting to do their thing and this yes and no and whatever, and Big corporate stuff slows things down where you have Vince McMahon and one person to answer to. It's more efficient that way. That's what Oliver Luck had said back in the day and about spring leagues and maybe not being successful because of that. That comes into play now in the new XFL 3.0 era. We have different Danny Garcia and The Rock, Redbird Capital. They're all different. We'll have to see and find out. That's my only little, like, I don't know, man. But we're hopeful. I still think things will be fine. I'm just throwing that out there so that, you know, if it doesn't go wrong, I can be like, look, I, I told you. This is what I told you a couple, a while ago. But I'm still feeling confident. There's no need to hit the panic button. Come May and June, and we haven't had any announcements, no TV deal, no commissioner, yeah, then I'm going to be like, mm, I don't think so. We'll have to wait and see, my friends. All right, that's it for this week's show. Man, I didn't think I have anything to talk about, but I did want to bring up that one piece. And yes, of course, our fantasy.pro wrestling news hub is doing well. It's cool. You can chat and it sends out notifications. I just got this cool, um, for you nerds out there, this service working. So now it's doing things behind the scenes. So now I can just plug stuff in and say, you know, we had a situation where, for example, and this would have happened with Fantasy XFL with a new application that come out. People created a league and no one 
they don't get enough peep members and the draft date stays the same. So this service checks and checks and checks. And then if the draft day passes, it resets and gives them a new draft date. It's those little tweaks is what are going to make things successful. And we got that kind of stuff going on. So the foundation is definitely there. It's just names, data, and fans playing, honestly. And uh, yeah, so it's doing good. And I'm excited to roll it out probably September, October range. And it would definitely be live after if we have a draft in October. I would just do it, put all the players out there, even if they're on the team, didn't make the team or whatever, probably do. You could do, you know, drafts or you know mock drafts, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the plan there. And plus maybe do a run with XFL data. But now I'm not even really sure we can get our hands on data. I do have XFL data on our site. Anyway, my friends, if you remember, if you want to get in touch with the show, email podcast at XFL News Hub or call 888-430-7692, extension 3. Remember to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. And, of course, like and subscribe to us on the YouTubes. That's it for me, folks. Enjoy the Super Bowl weekend for you fantasy, freshly, oh, uh, you uh, football nerds out there. Now remember, show notes, xflnewshub.com slash xfl-podcast. And, of course, in on the YouTube and the podcast, there's a link to our Discord to join in the conversation there for the XFL super nerds. All right, thanks for listening. Mahalo. Stay safe out there, my friends. It's snowing here in, in Maryland, and we're all stuck in. But we're also stuck in because of something else. And, yeah, you know what that is. All right, that's it for me, folks. And I will see you all. Oh, God bless. And I will see you all, you know what I say, later.